good afternoon. So, by a show of hands, how many people in the room here have had the opportunity to save a life? Okay, I don't see any hands. Uh, so, we're going to talk about that a little bit. How many people, by a show of hands, would save a life if you had the opportunity to do it? All right, that's what I like to see. A show of hands, excellent. So, we're going to talk a little bit now about how you can save a life. Um, sorry, the lights are really bright. Um, how you have the opportunity to save a life and not have to leap tall buildings in a single bound, um, not even have to be a fireman or a police officer, just to be an ordinary person doing an extraordinary thing. And the way I'm going to share it is actually through my own uh, experience as someone who needed his life saved. In 1991, I was about a year out of college, um, starting my career in Lower Manhattan as a foreign exchange analyst and had just been accepted to law school when I started to feel sick down the Jersey Shore on a vacation and was told shortly after that that I had leukemia and my only hope of a cure was a bone marrow transplant. So, like any college student, you know, person fresh out of college, feeling like the world was at their fingertips and nothing could stop them, ready to take on the world, um, I was stopped in my tracks and I was devastated. And I didn't know what to say and I didn't know what to do and it was almost a dreamlike state when the doctor told me this. But I was relieved to hear from the doctor that my life could be saved by a bone marrow transplant. However, you need a donor for a transplant. You need a healthy individual who has the ability to donate their marrow or their blood stem cells to save your life. So I thought, okay, well, I suppose the best place to look would be in my family, and I was right. Um, there's a 25% chance that a sibling uh, could be a match for a patient needing a transplant. Both my siblings uh, matched each other perfectly, but unfortunately didn't match me. And the reality is that only 30% of patients will find a match in their family. 70% need to go to the registries to look for unrelated donors. People like you out in the audience who have the ability to save a life because they're a match. So I thought, well, you know, what are the odds? I mean, at least maybe there'll be someone out there in the community who might be able to help me. And I went to a local hospital here in New York, met with a uh, transplant expert, and he had run the search, and he told me that while there was a lot they could do to make me comfortable, during the time that I had left, that I would never find a matching donor. And I asked him why. And he said, because of your ethnicity, because you're Jewish. And it stopped me in my tracks. I couldn't imagine why my religion or my ethnicity would play any role whatsoever in my ability to have an equal opportunity to get the transplant that I needed when I needed it. Until it was explained to me and I learned uh, that tissue type is inherited, and your best chance of finding a genetic match lies with those of similar ethnic background. Unfortunately, the global registry of donors is not ethnically and racially diverse. So for me, I'm Eastern European Jewish, I'm Ashkenazi Jewish, and what I didn't realize was that the Holocaust had implications even to this day. It severed bloodlines, likening the search for an Ashkenazi patient to looking for a needle in a haystack. So the doctor told me to go home, prepare my bucket list, and do all the things I wanted to do while I had the chance. Now the doctor knew a lot about leukemia and a lot about transplants, but one thing that he didn't know a lot about was the power of what we in the Jewish community call the Jewish mother. My mother was in the room with me and she wasn't about to let her son die. And that day we returned home and on my parents' dining room table, we started Gift of Life, an organization dedicated to finding matches for patients who need bone marrow transplants and curing blood cancer, leukemia, lymphoma, other blood-related diseases through marrow and stem cell donation. And we started out with our first local drive to get people into the registry in northern New Jersey, 
And before we knew it, the lines were coming, it was at a local synagogue, the lines were out the door, down the sidewalk, into the street, and we had police for crowd control. It was unbelievable to see how the community was coming out in full force to save the life of a complete stranger. And it was such a good feeling to see. And I really learned who my, my friends were out there. They happened to be total strangers who were willing to save, to save a life. Um, it was shortly after, as the drive started to explode, and we were running them all over the country and all over the world, that uh, Rabbi Haskell Luckstein at Congregation Kehilath Jeshurun ran a drive at his synagogue in New York. That was in late um, 1991. And at that time, uh, we had a number of high-profile people come to the drive, one who's going to be speaking here later this evening, a um, fellow by the name of Bob Abrams, who at the time was the New York State Attorney General, and he was running for the U.S. Senate. And he got tested, hoping that he would be a match for me, and he said, you know, I'm going to see the Rebbe in Crown Heights, and I'd really love to bring you with me so that you could share your story with him and see what he has to say. And we went together, and uh, Bob Abrams spoke to him about his uh, Senate race. Um, I sp spoke to the Rebbe about my search for a donor, and uh, so as not to take away from the impact of the video itself, um, many, if you would please run the video, we can actually see that meeting from December 2000, 1991. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I'd like you to meet this very nice young man. Jay Feinberg, who just found out that he has leukemia and he needs a blood marrow transplant. There are a few people in the United States and in the world who will be able to save his life because they have the same kind of blood marrow. And he's a wonderful young man and time is running out. So maybe you can give him some help or advice. So the, the Rebbe gave instructions to uh, bring a healthy person next time. And although we never had the opportunity to see each other again and our paths didn't cross, um, I, I am uh, happy to say that I am back here now 21 years later, uh, healthy, cancer-free. And thank you, Rebbe. Thank you, Rebbe, for his inspiring words. And one thing that, that my experience in meeting the Rebbe taught me was the power of the individual. And that's the part of the story that I want to share with you right now. Uh, it took four years while I was on chemotherapy, being treated for my leukemia to keep my disease in a remission. I was searching for a donor. We ran 225 drives all over the United States and all over the world in Israel, South Africa, Australia, um, even one at the JCC in Tokyo, um, in Belarus. Um, and uh, look, all looking for that donor. And we found matches for hundreds of other patients along the way. But it wasn't until um, four years later that my disease started to accelerate and the chemotherapy was no longer keeping me in remission. A young man in Chicago, a college student, decided, I'm going to try to help Jay and run one last drive. This is a young man who had a friend in Toronto who had found a donor from, from a drive that took place for me and he wanted to pay it forward and close that circle. His name is Benji. So Benji decided he was gonna run that drive. It was at a yeshiva in Milwaukee, the Wisconsin Institute of Torah Study. And he and a couple of his friends drove from Chicago to, uh, to Milwaukee to run the drive. One of the people we brought along to hand out flyers was a young lady by the name of Becky. Um, she originally wasn't planning to go, but her sister, who was supposed to go, was sick that morning, so she went in her place. And they ran a drive, and they tested 130 people. Becky wasn't tested because she was um, afraid of needles. At the time, it was a blood test. Today, it's actually a cheek swab. We've come a long way. 
But as they were packing up the supplies, Becky start, uh, just said, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to overcome my fear of needles. And she decided she was going to get tested. And I'm sure you know where this story is going. She was the very last person tested, and she turned out to be my match. So what it shows you, and I think what the, what the Rebbe also taught me, was the power of the individual. And that it only takes one person to make a difference in this world. Shortly thereafter, after I had my transplant out in Seattle at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center and recovered, um, the dean of uh, the law school in New Jersey, where I was supposed to go, called me and said, you know, we still have our, your seat open for you. It's five years later now, a year after I, I recovered from my transplant, and uh, asked me to, uh, to come on board. And again, reflected back to the Rebbe and about bringing him a healthy person. And I decided, how can I stop after what we've created, after what all of these remarkable people, these thousands of volunteers have worked so hard to create, um, how could we stop this? We had so many more people to help and really firmly believed that our mission wouldn't be done until everybody had an equal opportunity to receive the transplant they need when they needed one. So I decided to turn him down on the law school seat and instead decided to put my time into Gift of Life to work with extraordinary people who work so hard to recruit donors and those incredible people, the donors themselves, who give of themselves unreservedly to save the lives of total strangers. And I'm pleased to say that we now have a quarter of a million donors in the registry. Um, we've saved the lives of over 3,000 people. And And we'll continue this mission until every patient has an equal opportunity to receive the transplant they need. And particularly with a cheek, cheek swab, it's just so simple to get tested. And with bone marrow, you don't even necessarily need to, uh, to donate uh, bone marrow. You can do it from blood from your arm. Um, I don't know if we have a moment to show the two-minute video or not. Um, do we? No? Okay. So I'll just encourage you to go to www.giftoflife.org if you would like to become a lifesaver and uh, help save the lives of patients needing uh, bone marrow transplants. And I thank you so much for your time and attention. <laughs>